still healing from the wounds of January 6th, the symbol of U.S. democracy again awash in police lights. First responders raced to the scene after the driver of this vehicle struck two officers at a Capitol Hill checkpoint and then rammed into a barricade. The suspect exited the vehicle with a knife in hand. The suspect did start lunging toward U.S. Capitol Police officers. That's when at least one officer opened fire, shooting the suspect who later died in hospital. He's been identified as 25-year-old Noah Green, an Indiana man previously unknown to authorities. It does not appear to be terrorism uh, related, but obviously uh, we'll continue to investigate uh, to see if there's some type of nexus uh, along those lines. The two injured officers were immediately rushed to hospital, but it would not be enough. It is with a very, very heavy heart that I announce one of our officers has succumbed to his injuries. That officer, William Evans, or Billy, as his friends called him. He had been a member of the U.S. Capitol Police for 18 years. The second officer remains in hospital in stable condition. This has been an extremely difficult time for U.S. Capitol Police after the events of January 6th and now the events that have occurred here today. On January 6th, Officer Brian Sicknick was beaten by rioters and died of his injuries. Two more officers died by suicide in the days and weeks that followed. Police today paid their respects to their fallen colleague as a procession left hospital carrying the remains of Officer Evans. Another devastating blow to this small policing community. And Katie, despite today's attack, security won't be increasing on Capitol Hill. Security is going to remain the same, and police are describing the suspect as a lone assailant. Now, this attack comes not long after some of the security fencing around the perimeter here was taken down, and some of the uh, extreme security was actually starting to relax. There's a divisive debate around it, whether more should be done, less should be done, and now this debate is only going to intensify after what happened today. As we saw in your story, Katie, this has been devastating, of course, for the police force. What about for people who live around there? It's another blow for the people who live here in D.C. Remember, January 6th was less than three months ago. The trauma from that is incredibly raw. And all of this is happening at a time when there's still a pandemic. People are unemployed. People are dying. D.C.'s numbers aren't that great when you look at the national picture. So this is just another traumatic event for people that live in a place that has witnessed a number of traumatic events in just the past few months. All right, Katie, thank you.